If I wanted to return to what you asked about new clot versus existing clot, right. and we now have some data from some of the trials showing that, you know, if you have a clot there on that ultrasound at say 30 days, we used to think, oh, that's kind of a soft endpoint. But what we found in one of the studies is that poses a risk of death uh, in the time after 30 days. And the more clot, the higher the risk of death. And the other big predictor of having that clot there was being D-dimer positive. So we do have a marker, even if you don't get an ultrasound, of the likelihood not just to the presence, but to the extent of the clot. And greater clot, greater risk. And just so the audience is clear, you're referring to asymptomatic clot. Asymptomatic clot. can, can be a, The point is asymptomatic clot can be a killer. Right. Well, yeah. and, and if I can just add to um, because we're, we have very similar information. And, and um, you know, the guidelines back in 2012 kind of took a departure where the group sort of said the important events are only the symptomatic events. But if you think about this condition, the, the main primary reason to give prophylaxis is that fatal pulmonary embolism in many patients presents a sudden death. And so there's no chance to treat the patient. And if a patient survives a pulmonary embolus, most of them, the prognosis is excellent with treatment. So the issue, the thrombi that kill are the ones that are silent and there in the calf or in the thigh and uh, not known about. And, and, and these asymptomatic thrombi are not surrogate endpoints from the point of view of, of other trial terminology. That's actually the disease uh, before it has the last manifestation that we're trying to prevent, which is fatal embolism. And so, uh, Proximal vein thrombosis, even if it's asymptomatic, is a sinister and serious condition. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really important point because a lot of trials have included that as an endpoint. And some people say, well, if it's asymptomatic, I mean, is it a real endpoint? And the point that you're making, in fact, is it can be an endpoint, but unfortunately it becomes a hard endpoint. It's, you know, the horse is out of the barn. So, so to Deepak, speak. I think uh, to Gary's point is, is crucial in my view because when you look at the epidemiologic data, in the acute medical patient as opposed to the surgical patient, they tend to present with much more severe forms of VTE. So they tend to present with more proximal forms of DVT. They tend to present with much more severe central PE compared to surgical patients. And then they tend to die more often from VT-related causes. So uh, when you get a patient who's elderly, who's comorbid, who has limited cardiopulmonary reserve, it doesn't take a large clot to put them over edge in terms of cardiopulmonary collapse. So it's crucial, and we have to remind our audience that, that the first manifestation of a VT in this population may be sudden death. You know, it's, it's really a, a provocative thought when you realize there's this trouble lurking there. And I'm just going to ask a question. It, 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 I'm not trying to generate uh, unnecessary health care costs, but would there be any utility in that sort of medically ill patient? They've been in the hospital for a week with uh, their pneumonia or their with influenza or, or heart failure or something like that, just scan their legs. Um, and, and you were talking about machine learning and AI and Skynet and that sort of stuff. You know, someday machine learning is going to be able to interpret images pretty well, just get somebody to scan the leg with a handheld ultrasound. The AI will point out clot or no clot. Uh, is there any merit to doing that? Epic, Other than the Epic, cost and logistics of Epic it. will become sentient on December first, uh, two thousand nineteen. <laughs> Which year is it? Th th this year. You better get ready. But I, but I do think you know perhaps machine learning and AI could then direct you to who is the person at greater risk of this uh, subsequent clot. I think what just astounds me, having grown up on the arterial side, is that people think when you're discharged from the hospital, you're okay on the venous side. You're not. I mean many, if not most, of the events will happen after discharge. And we just keep focusing on inpatient Absolutely. care when, in fact, the biggest threat is in the outpatient setting. Do we have any sense what those numbers are in terms of what is the risk exactly? Uh, you leave the hospital, what is the risk if you've been so, medically so ill? So in, 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 in the generalized patient population of medically ill, the general medically ill patient, it's about a 1.5% symptomatic VT event rate at, at about 90 days or so. This so that's is a symptomatic DVT or a correct, pulmonary embolus. Correct. So it, it really underestimates the fatal pulmonary embolic events. Now, when you look at certain high-risk groups, however they're defined, that maybe jumps up to in the 3% or 3.5%, 4%. But again, 
um, there's an underestimate of, of what we call the fatal pulmonary embolic events within those numbers. Yeah, it's interesting, Mike. Uh, stent thrombosis rates these days are much lower, but we obsess so much about mm -hmm. dual antiplatelet therapy. What's the right duration? Right. You but know, it's just so strange to me that on that side, we're worried about a year. Should we extend beyond mm -hmm. a year? Right. And, and here we're thinking, well, you know, just five, ten days, maybe that's enough. It's very odd. Uh, it's a big disconnect between right. the that's timing another, of the event. That's another major point is that um, the mortality rates for a, a lot of these manifestations of venous disease are actually higher now than MI. Um, the, like in hospital and 90 day mortality for PEs higher than STEMI, right. but probably because our therapies are so advanced in, for STEMI, but it's still true. And if you talk to house staff, they're not really worried about PE or DVT. Um, there's very laissez-faire attitude about it when actually it's, it's a very important mor comorbidity uh, and complication. Yeah, yeah, Deepak, just to, yeah. just to add to that, I think, you know, cardiology has done such a good job of reducing the outcomes and improving the outcome of patients oh, with you. coronary disease and so on. Well, thank you. So yeah. there's, yeah. but, but there's a say. lot of people <laughs> living with, with um, finicky hearts and, and other things. And so we don't need a huge embolus to, to push these people over. I think that's really important. But just to the numbers again, so Alex mentioned the symptomatic rates, right? But if you look at the asymptomatic proximal thrombosis rates that we talked about, those are going to be like 8 to 10 percent at about a 30-day period. That's, that's one thing. Secondly, we, don't, we vastly underestimate the contribution of pulmonary embolism to death in these cardiorespiratory patients because we get autopsies in very few, and a patient who dies with four or five reasons to have shortness of breath and other conditions pulmonary embolism is way down the thinking. So I think the, uh, and just to wind it up with your question about ultrasound. Yes. So for a, I was just thinking no one's right, actually answered right. the question. So at the moment, it, the yield is not high enough to apply that to the broad population. Um, I would say it might be a useful thing to do if, if prophylaxis was contraindicated and you couldn't give prophylaxis a patient, um, then um, maybe that's okay, but I think if machine learning, as Mike talked about, can help us pick out people with much higher risks and get those yields up, uh, you know, the, the, then it, it may be useful. And you may not need a, that's the other thing, you may not need a sort of a full leg type of ultrasound, because what you're just trying to find are big thrombi in that's the That's what I meant, the just the handheld the device, popliteal. scan the thigh. Right, and... so the, the thrombi that are going to kill somebody, and that's what you're may be able to do. So I wouldn't dismiss the case finding strategy, but first we're better off because we've really improved the safety of, of prophylaxis in recent years. And so therefore, if we can give primary prevention, that's a better approach. 